Bienvenidos. Welcome to beautiful Uruapan. Buenos dias, good morning country collectors and welcome to Ruapan, Michoacan's second largest city. It's known for its incredible lush national forest, bustling avocado industry and much more. We can't wait to show you around. Before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of our future adventures. Ruapan is located in the center of the state of Michoacan, about 100 kilometers west from its capital, Morelia. If you are driving or hopping a bus from there, the journey should take an hour and a half to two hours. Now that we're here, let's check out where we're staying. This lovely open loft features a king-size bed, double sofa bed, dining room, full kitchen, bathroom, balcony, Wi-Fi, and smart TV. It is centrally located just two blocks from the Zocalo and six from the National Park, making it the perfect spot to explore this city. Before we jump into the video, let's learn some quick history. So prior to the arrival of the Spanish in 1522, this region was home to the indigenous Purépechas. But after the conquerors invaded the Purépecha Empire, and began persecuting, killing, and looting, they fled into the mountains to protect themselves. In 1533, Juan de San Miguel, a Spanish Franciscan friar, arrived founding the city, convincing them to return to their regions. He then organized them into communities and assigned each one a patron saint, which is how the original nine neighborhoods of this city were formed. We are starting our day here in the center of Uruapan in the large and long Plaza de Martires. Like all squares in Mexico, it's a nice place to come down and take a stroll or a break on one of the many benches in the shade of the trees. This past weekend, we spent time down here just watching the world go by. Families were out enjoying themselves, children were feeding the birds, there was this little lawnmower powered tram making its rounds. I thought that was really neat. Mexican ingenuity at its finest. Down here in the park, you can find Plaza Morelos with this monument dedicated to Jose Maria Morelos, a hero of the Mexican independence, whom before joining the cause was a priest here in the city. And here in the plaza, they are getting ready for their Dia de los Muertos celebrations. You can see they just planted these cempasuchil, those beautiful orange flowers. We celebrated last year in Oaxaca. If you would like to learn all about it, we will put the video right up here for you. Surrounding the plaza, you can find many shops as well as the colorful Uruapan letters, which as you know, is a great place to snap a photo. And on the north side of the plaza, you can find some very notable buildings like this one right here, Parroquia San Francisco. On the outside, you can admire its colonial architecture, which dates back to the founding of the city. This church is dedicated to the patron saint, San Francisco de Assisi. Inside, you will find some more contemporary elements and murals. Located next to the parroquia is the House of Culture and as you can see, we are surrounded by beautiful, unique art here. A lot of paintings and portraits from local artists here in the city of Uruapan. And in the center, we actually got to see them making some of the calaveras or the big skulls for their Dia de los Muertos festival. It's so cool. Just outside is the pedestrian walkway known as Garcia Ortiz. And this place right here, Cafe La Lucha. Every time we walk by, it is packed with people and the aroma from the coffee just makes my mouth water. Let's run inside and grab a cup. It is no wonder you can smell the coffee from the street because behind me here, they're actually processing the beans. We just went inside and we saw that they are roasting them and then they're sorting them, you know, picking out the bad ones, bagging them, and I'm guessing they ship them off and sell them. It says over here, this has been a tradition for a hundred years, which is really neat. Outside, there's some huge machine behind me, which I don't know what it is, it looks like a torture machine, but it's probably where they roasted the beans and there is art all over here as well. It's kind of like a little museum. I'm just kind of like blown away right now. There's an orange tree behind Adam. <laughs> this is really neat and I know Adam is just dying to try a cup of this coffee, so let's do that. Oh yeah, baby, this looks so good. I went with a cold brew for 70 pesos. Inside has this nice relaxed kind of vibe. They have a ton of really delicious looking desserts. I almost got a slice of cake, but I knew Heidi <laughs> would not be happy with me since we haven't had breakfast yet. It's just packed in there and it's nice because at home I feel like we do have a coffee culture-ish, but it's like Starbucks here. This place has been here for over a hundred years. You can see some older gentlemen inside. And when I say older, I mean refined. They probably have been coming here for their entire life getting coffee. They're just sitting there enjoying, having a little conversation. Let's try this baby out. 
It is so dark. <laughs> wow. That is like rocket fuel. It has a super robust flavor and I already feel the caffeine. Like it just kind of hit the back of my throat and I'm like, woo! <laughs> absolutely delicious you should definitely come down here and try it out all right let's keep this day moving just east located on the north side of the plaza you will find museo indígena la huatapera if you like history and culture this is the place for you the museum contains a complete collection of handicrafts and art from the various indigenous groups in the state relating to their daily religious and artistic lives it's open tuesday to saturday and admission is free wow this museum is a must see i definitely have a lot deeper appreciation for the state and the region and what i love the most was seeing the traditional dress from the four different indigenous groups from Michoacan because as we've been walking around we've been seeing these ladies wearing the exact same thing so it just like kind of all came together right now so definitely recommend coming here and something else that I read was that this place was first established in 1533 as a hospital the first of its kind in Latin America Wow! I know and just out front, there's a tourist information booth where you can pick up a map and get some information about the area. And alongside the museum is the Church of the Immaculate Conception, which is beautiful both outside and in. All right, I think it is time for a food break that Caffeina's Adam chomping at the bit back here. Behind the church and the museum, you can find Mercado de Antojitos or a snack market. So let's go see what delicious treats we can find. We found ourselves at La Estrella de las Carnitas and normally we would browse around and see what there was to offer but when I saw the carnitas here I could not pass it up. If you know Michoacan it's actually the carnitas capital of Mexico. I went with the sortido torta. It's a mix of the fat, the meat and the skin all put together <laughs> on this beautiful looking sandwich right here. I cannot wait to jump in but first do you know what a Mexican pig is called? No. <laughs> Pork K. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> and he didn't mean sandwich, he meant torta. I did mean torta. <laughs> mm. That is humongous. It's mm. so good. Wow, and the flavor is also huge. <laughs> absolutely perfectly prepared the pork has a nice little crisp to it from the skin there's also a tenderness to that meat and i added a little spice to it to kick it up a notch definitely a winner and heidi got the enchiladas de adobero which is this cheese right here it's a traditional fresh mexican cheese made from cow's milk it's warm so it seems like they grilled it it reminds me of halloumi a bit and then under here are the enchiladas filled with that same cheese it has some lettuce tomato and onion on top and some papas with some salsa it looks so good let's taste it out Ooh, I made like a little tower with the cheese the enchilada and then the papas let's try it <laughs> mm. it's like exactly the comfort food I was needing today super delicious as you can see, I am thoroughly enjoying this dish right here. This cheese is super mild on its own, but when coupled with the salsas, this dish just becomes very bright. And at the beginning when we were ordering, they made sure to tone down the spice level for me without asking. And then they asked and they said, do you like it spicy or not? And I said, mild. So you can come here, just ask them, you know, tell them what you want and they'll take care of you. They are super considerate, but yeah, definitely everything here has been fantastic. All right, it is time for a nap and I know just the right place. It might be a bit of a tight squeeze, especially after all that food, but I think we'll fit. Come join us. What's that sound? <laughs> it's a tortilleria all over Mexico. There are so many unique sounds and I feel like when we first got here, it was really hard to figure out what they were and now we can sort of pick them out like when they're ringing the bell, it's the garbage man. When you hear the squeaky little wheels like this, it's the tor tortillas that are just going on the conveyor belt around and around. It's such a cool thing when you stay someplace long enough that you can start to pick up on these little nuances. It really makes you feel like you're part of it. Absolutely. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's gonna give me a little hot sauce too. Once again, Mexican hospitality is like no other. Yeah, so nice. Put a little hot sauce on there. <laughs> oh yeah, let's try this out. Wow, 
That is so fresh and hot, absolutely delicious. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just love those experiences. That was so nice. They saw we were making a little video and he was like, try our product. And let me tell you, these are delicious. I mean, some of the best I feel like I've had it was just so funny when I walked up and I was like a little apprehensive <laughs> and I hooked up my camera. He's like, come on in, come yeah. on in, get some video. The hospitality. Just incredible. Mm -hmm. What's that sound? <laughs> it's the garbage man. Like I was just saying, they ring the bell and everyone brings their trash out. At home, they come to you here, you go to them. Welcome to La Casa Mas Angosta in El Mundo. Do you know what that means? It means this right here is the most narrow house in the world according to the Guinness Book of World Records. Inside it measures 1.42 meters wide and 10.2 meters long. It was constructed in 1985 and given the title in 1999. On Sunday we were able to take a tour of this house with Jorge, the owner, resider, and builder of this incredible little house right here. Upon entering we were wowed with the amount of cool things inside the walls are covered in pictures of visitors and there are little knickknacks everywhere. Towards the back of the first floor is the kitchen where he would prepare his meals and coffee. Up the ladder to the second floor brought us to the first cozy room. The bed was a tight squeeze but we made it work. Across from it and over a plank you can find the bathroom. This is the narrowest part of the house. Adam had a lot of fun here pretending to shower on the toilet. One more floor up is where the second bedroom is featuring a nice open balcony. This is also where Adam and Arnie had a pumping iron face off. I'll say it ended in a tie. <laughs> One more floor up brought us to the rooftop and beer garden. What's a visit to the narrowest house in the world without enjoying a nice big brewski? What a fun tour. It cost 30 pesos and we really wanted to say thank you to Jorge for opening up his home to us and sharing this unique place with the world. We have another unique place just down the road we want to show you, so let's go. And while you're walking around, make sure to keep those peepers peeping people for details like this. Some of the paint has peeled away on this building and you can actually see it's made out of mud, hay, rocks, and some sticks. It's just so cool to think that this was constructed so long ago, that this is how it was. And then there is this other city that's grown up around it. It's such a wonderful place. You should definitely come and check it out. If you continue south from the narrow house on the same road, it'll dead end. And this is what you will find, the old factory of San Pedro. This textile mill was constructed in 1787 during the industrial peak here in Uruapan. Nowadays, you're able to come in and admire the architecture. You can even see 150 year old looms and this place is actually still functioning. They are still making products using those looms. It is also a spot where they hold events such as weddings and up over here is a gallery as well but what I love is this yard. I mean check out this grass and if you can hear that that is the river flowing to our side here. Cupatizio is the name of it, I believe. And what's really interesting is back in the day, that river is what provided the electricity here. So yeah, it's a really cool place to come down and enjoy, admission is free. And what I really love is people taking care of this place and restoring it so we can still feel that history for years to come. And while we are here enjoying the grounds of this very lovely historic place, we would love to give a shout out to our newest patrons. Francis, Keisha, Liba, Jim. Bill, Brenda, Pam, Michelle, and Ella. Thank you so, so much for being a part of this community. It means the world to mm -hmm. us that you are with us every day and helping to make this incredible adventure happen. Yes, you make our hearts beat just a little faster. We just, yeah, we appreciate the heck out of you. So thank you so much again. If you would like to join our Patreon community, we will put the link in the description below. Well, who is ready for some more nature? <laughs> you are. I am. On the west side of the city, there is a national park. I believe it is the second most visited in Mexico. So let's head over. We'll see you there. Welcome to Parque Nacional Barranca del Cupatizio. It's only about a 10 to 15 minute walk from the park we showed you this morning. We just purchased our tickets. It's 30 pesos each to enter. So let's go see it together. Upon entering, you will see a beautiful fountain as well as some vendors selling some nice treats and this map right here, which you should definitely check out because it will show you all the best spots to go in the park. Another traveler tip, the only bathrooms are here and at the exit. So if you gotta go, you better go now. <laughs> I'm gonna go right now. <laughs> all right, I'm back. Let's go explore. So this is actually our 
third time coming to this park. We love it that much. Adam came here yesterday and got a guide, which turns out, I mean, he came home and was just full of knowledge that he's gonna fill you in with a little later. So we definitely recommend that. But what's really cool is all along the, in the park, they have these signs here that talk to you about the different species, flora, fauna, you know, animals you can find. I actually read there are over 495 species of plant and 213 terrestrial vertebrae. So keep those eyes open. One of the first things you're probably gonna notice when entering the park is the amount of water everywhere. In front of me, there's two waterfalls there's this stream coming down here. There are water features everywhere. And all this water, guess where it goes into? That river that we showed you at the factory. It actually begins here in the park. We're gonna take you to that point in just a little bit. But I hear a large waterfall over here, so let's go chase it. <laughs> all right, TLC. <laughs> I know you can hear it. It is so beautiful. Check this out. Wow, I feel like this is our own private waterfall. No one else is around and look at the green here. I am so impressed with this place. It's definitely one of those places that kind of gets into your soul and kind of brings you back to the basics. It is absolutely gorgeous. We should come down here and snap a photo. So like Heidi mentioned, I took a tour yesterday. My guide Jesus was wonderful. It was 200 pesos. He took me to all the best spots and he also showed me a couple of little tricks around here like these berries. They're called Nispiru or Nespiru berries. He said you could peel them or just bite right into them. So I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> oh, mm. it had like a little pop. It does have a little pop to it. There's some seeds inside, so be careful. It is a little bit bitter at first, but then it gets sweet on the back end. They're absolutely delicious, but don't bite the seeds. You might break your tooth. Oh, there goes one. <laughs> And don't eat berries if you don't know what they are. That is a great point. Do not put anything in your mouth that someone hasn't said it was okay to do. Just up a little bit from those berries is this beautiful green leaf. It's called Oja Santa or the Holy Leaves. If you've ever been to Oaxaca, this is actually something that they eat there with their tamales. You take your hand like this, you rub it together nice till it warms up a little bit. And it smells like black licorice. Oh, I can smell it over here. I know, and the best part is you just tear off a little bit of the leaf, chew it up, and it tastes like black licorice. <laughs> Very cool. Behind us here is Rio Cupatizio. It is so clear and beautiful, and we actually learned that it provides all of the drinking water to the city and the surrounding regions. When we were in here the other day, we saw people just drinking from the fountains. And you know, like being in Mexico, you're always worried about the water because you don't want to get sick. So that was kind of just like, you know, a red flag came up and we were like, don't do that. And we talked to people and they're like, no, it's clean. It comes from the spring right here. So we got to do it as well. And I don't know, I think that's one of the coolest things about this entire city. And it tasted <laughs> so good. Amazing. Right around the corner is our first fountain here. It's called the Rainbow Fountain. Something that we learned that is so cool is that besides that fountain when we first walked in, all of these are naturally powered from the pressure of the water and gravity. Wow, that's really interesting. I know, you're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for taking the tour. <laughs> the first time we came here was on the weekend and it was, I wouldn't say packed, but there was a lot more people here. Look at today. We, we are the only ones. I haven't seen anyone else walking around. It's really amazing. So definitely come in the weekday if you want a bit more like serenity. And a little tranquility. Yeah. Right up here is my one of my favorite little walkthroughs, but watch your step. <laughs> ready, ready, ready. Let's catch. <laughs> Boom! Six points. <laughs> Look at this over here. It's like a nice zen waterfall wall with all of these plants just growing. <laughs> Check out how big the leaves are too. Honestly, I kind of feel like I'm in an Indiana Jones movie and we're trying to find the lost temple and there's all <laughs> these like little walls and stuff behind it. And I'm trying to not get hit with one of those little poison darts. <laughs> <laughs> or Legends of the Hidden Temple, the, oh, the game show. That was a good one. Oh, my favorite. Come here, come here. Ooh, what do you got? What do you got? I found like a little romantic corner down beyond this tree right here. And look at this waterfall. Wow. I, we always say it like, right? Around every corner, there's something equally or more exciting. And I feel like this national park is just kind of like a microcosm of Mexico in general. It's so beautiful. 
And as you come around the corner, you will find one of my favorite places in the park. It is so beautiful. There are three fountains right here. You have my girlfriend's veil over here. <laughs> the peacock fountain over there kind of looks like the peacock oh, yeah. feathers. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the best one up here, this fountain has 160 spouts in it, as well as this incredible mural that flows along the top that is of the indigenous people. You know what? I'm feeling a little parched. Let's go up and grab a sip. Conveniently, there are all these little spouts that are coming out. My wonderful guide, Jesus, gave me another big tip. If you're gonna drink the water, don't use your hands because they might be dirty. You just gotta go for it. Wow. <laughs> it's so cool and refreshing, and it's some of the best tasting water I have ever had. You know what, it's so good. One sec. I'm taking some home with me. <laughs> I love this. Oh yeah. Natural refillment. And when you come here, you may even get lucky and see the Calavadistas or Daredevil Divers. You can see this platform behind me here. The other day, we got to see them diving off into the water below, which is only six foot deep, which is just crazy to me. So definitely tip them if you're gonna watch them because they are endangering their lives for your enjoyment. We also heard on Dia de los Muertos for the festival, they will jump at night with torches which sounds pretty awesome as well. And something that stuck with me from my tour with Jesus was that he said this park was made by the hands of man, but the nature was made by the hands of God. And it just kind of like struck me that, you know, like as much as we can create ourselves with all of our technology and all the things we can do, we can never do this. How incredible to be here sharing this with you. As you're walking around, you're gonna see these springs coming out of the side of the mountain. There are 360 that they know of, and even more that they don't. They kind of flow underneath where we're walking right now and all come together that go to the river. Another gorgeous waterfall right here. This is the waterfall of the sun because as you follow it up, it looks like it's actually flowing out of the sky. It just kind of gets lost in infinity. And if you're here at the right time of the day, you can actually see the sun streaming through. Absolutely incredible. Ball. About halfway through the park, you will come to a trout farm. Unfortunately, it's closed right now because we're towards the end of the day. But if you come a little bit earlier, you should definitely go in and check it out. You can buy food and feed the trout. They have between 50 and 80,000 trout in here in various stages of their life and sizes. It takes nine months for them to get big enough to sell, which is about a half a kilo, so one pound. But you know what? You can buy it here for 145 pesos per kilo and then bring it over to one of the kitchens that we passed along the way and they'll cook it for you for 70 pesos. <laughs> so you can come here and have some lunch. That's right, talk about some fresh fish. <laughs> and we recommend wearing some nice supportive shoes because the entire park is pretty much this like rocky cobblestone. Mm -hmm. And it can be a little bit slippery. So mm -hmm. you wanna make sure that you're secure and they have some great handrails you can hold on to along the way just to keep you safe. We care about you. And if you're craving some adrenaline, they have a zip line here for you. It costs 56 pesos. It's only open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and on holidays. And also if you continue down along here, it'll take you to a very nice viewpoint of the waterfall. Absolutely gorgeous, definitely recommend it. Earlier I told you that the river, the Cupatizio River began here and this is the spot this is the actual spring so there is a local legend here back in the day the Pore Pecho were suffering from a massive drought so they went to the friar Juan de San Miguel and asked for his help so he gathered everyone up and they came to this spot and performed a mass it is said when he threw the holy water at these rocks right here the smell of sulfur came up and the devil came out he ran up the ravine and he tripped right over here. And this spot here is called Rodio del Diablo, the devil's knee, because it said that he made an indentation here when he ran out. Ever since that moment, the spring came up and the water started flowing again and everyone was happy. <laughs> Pretty neat story. I think we can all agree just to us how special this place is. And I'm so happy that the locals have this spot to come to. I'm also happy that we have this spot to come to. Like Heidi said, this is our third mm. trip here. It's just so serene yeah. and beautiful and calming. And, and the water is delicious and free. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, talking about drinks, I am a little hungry and I know just the spot, so come along. We were walking by here the other day 
and all of these avocado offerings caught my eye. If you didn't know, this city is actually known as the world capital of avocado and Michoacan produces half of all the avocados in the world, coming in at 5.5 billion pounds per year. That is incredible. Let's head inside and try some avocado deliciousness. This has to be one of the most unique restaurants we have been to. I love the menu. You can see there's little avocado symbols next to all of the items that have avocado in them. There's so many options. I'll be honest, we haven't chosen our food yet, but what we did choose was our drinks. Adam went with this avocado beer. He got the blonde ale. And I went with a smoothie. It has avocado chocolate and mint, and boy is it delicious. And what's not to love, they give you free guacamole to start. Mm. As I mentioned, we had a hard time deciding, so we went with three things. We got the Carpaccio de Trucha Semonada, which is like a salmon trout. Mm. It was really interesting, very delicious. It had a little bit of spice to it, so just be careful there. We also went with the guacatas, which is basically rice and avocado mashed up into balls and then fried, and it comes with a salsa de maracuya or passion fruit, which really makes a nice balance there. And then we went with crema de aguacate, which is avocado soup. You can imagine exactly what it tastes like. It tastes like blended avocado. That's <laughs> hot. <laughs> All very interesting. Definitely not stuff we would eat every day, but when you're in avocado land, it's a must. What another wonderful day with you. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time with us. We know how valuable it is. Absolutely, and for us, this place has just been really special and shown us another side of Michoacan yeah. that kind of like touched us in the heart the way that Oaxaca did. Absolutely, yeah, we were talking and comparing Oaxaca to Michoacan. Oaxaca like had this craze. I feel like it still does, right? A lot of people are going there and enjoying it because of its offerings, but I think Michoacan offers the same or even more. Oh man, food, yeah. culture, we have some great coffee, the best avocados in the world. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they have so much here. The landscapes, you know, the Lake Petscoro. The art, the music, mm -hmm. the dancing. Yeah, so definitely don't overlook Michoacan. I think it is overlooked quite often. I just think people don't even know about yeah. it. So we're telling you, yeah. come and visit Michoacan. Or, you know, people have been writing to us and telling us like, it's dangerous, don't go there, or asking us more so, like, isn't it dangerous? Why are you there? And from our personal experience, I have felt safe the entire time we have been here. We are cautious about things, you know, sure. we don't go out at night and stuff like that, like late, but that's everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so definitely put Michoacan on the list, but thank you again so, so much. We would have had nowhere near as much fun if you hadn't been here to share it with us. If you enjoyed this video, give us a big thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to... Ding, ling, 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 the avocado. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Adios.